Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to go over a study uh, that was printed as a letter to the editor in the New England Journal of Medicine um, earlier this year. It was from uh, out of Portland State University, uh, and the title of the article is Hidden Formaldehyde in East Cigarette Aerosol. Uh, the several interesting points about this is the, the uh, publicity really took off after this was uh, published as a letter to the editor that um, uh, electronic cigarettes had 15 times the carcinogenic capacity of a traditional cigarette based on this study. Uh, interesting, a couple of interesting facts about this study. The first one is uh, they didn't measure formaldehyde. They measured something called formaldehyde releasing agents um, in which they acknowledge in this paper that they don't know what the effects of formaldehyde releasing agents are in the respiratory tract. Uh, however, they do know that formaldehyde is well recognized as a class one carcinogen. Uh, later on, they uh, actually stated in this article that they'd never measured gaseous formaldehyde, which is what's known to be the problem um, in uh, cigarettes, one of the problems, uh, actually a small problem in cigarettes uh, as far as carcinogenesis. So they never measured formaldehyde. They measured formaldehyde releasing agents and then made the assumption that formaldehyde releasing agents act the same as formaldehyde. So the, the reason they call this hidden formaldehyde in this study is because it hid so well they never found it. Uh, but what they did to find the high levels of formaldehyde releasing agent was they overheated the coil. They used a, a top loading CE4 uh, and um, had, uh, a, 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 had fumes that came out that were so obnoxious that nobody would ever be able to vape them, but they measured that and found formaldehyde re releasing agent. Interestingly enough, when they ran that same experiment in CE4 at 3.3 volts, cutting down to something that's more like what vapors do, they really found no detectable levels of this formaldehyde releasing agent, which is really fairly typical of other studies. But that part of this um, letter to the editor n never really got published. It didn't take off. The sensationalized uh, headlines were 15 times the uh, cancer-causing agent in electronic cigarettes. Uh, it's gone so far as to be being promoted by local health departments uh, and um, just basically spreading uh, incorrect information based on a letter to the editor. It doesn't even have the, the weight of a, a true research, um, peer-reviewed research article, but letter to the editor. Didn't find formaldehyde, but made the claims that if, if what they found was like formaldehyde, it would be 15 times more dangerous. So anyway, putting that aside, I've set up a little bit, little experiment today, and uh, what we're going to do, and this is really kind of funny, I've got this uh, formaldehyde detector uh, that I got uh, from Amazon.com for $80. Uh, I've talked to some research scientists who do the formaldehyde detection. They had no idea that such a thing exists. They go through a very elaborate set of um, absorptions to uh, make sure they've got as much formaldehyde as they possibly can. And when I told them that you had, you can buy one for $80 off Amazon for home measurement of formaldehyde. They were astounded. Yes, but anyway, that's what I got here. Um, the, the range on this goes down to, um, it starts at uh, 10 parts per billion, but incremental measurements of one part per billion uh, of formaldehyde. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and try this first. We'll try initially with electronic cigarette vapor, and I'll be very generous with it. And we'll see where this goes. We'll see where it starts off with, because there's always some ambient formaldehyde around. You're gonna have to know what your baseline is. So I'm going to try this first with um, a uh, e-cig. Um, what I have here is a uh, uh, primarily BG solution. It's uh, uh, flavors, 3% nicotine. Uh, the nicotine is VG-based, uh, uh, and it's a high VG mixture. Uh, the, the flavors in there are fruit circles and mandarin orange. Uh, and I, with this particular mod, you can't go up to 5 volts. It peaks out at 4 volts, and I'll do the best that I can at 4 volts. Uh, I've already tried it before I put the video on and it's, it's kind of harsh, but I'm going to see what we can get and see how bad I can make this be with electronic cigarettes. Uh, since I don't smoke, I had to borrow cigarettes from my next door neighbor. Uh, he does smoke. I've tried to get him to quit, but long story. Uh, these are Marlboro, Marlboros, uh, so we'll try that. Uh, and as the last experiment, uh, I do enjoy a cigar every couple of weeks, so we're going to try and see what kind of formaldehyde we can get out of a cigar. Uh, first thing we'll do, we'll go ahead and set this uh, machine up. It goes through a, a uh, setup protocol. It takes about 10 seconds for it to do that. And once it's ready, we'll see what the ambient 
uh, formaldehyde is around us right now, because that'll be our baseline. And from there, we'll detect the formaldehyde with these different uh, modalities. So starting off at about 12 parts per billion, may fluctuate up a little bit. Uh, a part per billion is a very small amount, so uh, measurements will fluctuate a bit. But right now, it's at 12. We'll go ahead and put this in here uh, facing the camera. I've done this experiment before, and I know that the um, electronic cigarette will fog this up quite a bit. We don't have anything elaborate here to do this with. Uh, we don't have special hermetically sealed chambers. We don't have smoke machines. I'm going to use uh, a fish aquarium that I got from Petco for $12, sealing it with saran wrap uh, and uh, using the Dr. Bob 54 puffer machine uh, to get the uh, um, vapor inside there. And we'll see where it goes. Okay, all right, we're going to seal this loosely over here just to get things started and I'm going to get it, get it ready. We'll put uh, five puffs in here and we'll see what happens. I am losing a little bit of it, by the way. formaldehyde meter just fell over. Now, what I just did has no resemblance to what a vapor will normally do. Five consecutive puffs without rest will cause this to overheat a little bit, and as time went on, it did get a little bit more of a throat burn for me. So hopefully, I'm hoping we produced a little bit of formaldehyde for this demonstration, but we'll let it sit for a second. By the way, if, this, if the meter goes up to 300 um, parts per billion, it'll set off an alarm. If it goes up to 500 parts per billion, the alarm will, will accelerate, become uh, louder, and go from a yellow flashing light to a red flashing light as a, as a danger, danger zone. So right now you can see this tank is pretty well full of vapor. Uh, the first time I ran this, it was, it was really funny. It was, um, I put the um, meter in the bottom of the tank facing up, and I was trying to read the formaldehyde level off of it, but you, you can't see through this. This is obviously very saturated. This is nothing like what uh, vapor would have around them for this amount of time, but we're measuring the formaldehyde. It take, it'll take a minute for it to equilibrate, so I'm not gonna be in a hurry to pull this out and show you, um, but it's um, uh, uh, working its, its magic right now. All right, that should be long enough to get at least a, an idea. So what we've got now is we've got 45 parts per billion. So it went from 12 to 45 parts per billion. Uh, and it'll drop down pretty quickly once I get it out of there. But the uh, 45 parts per billion um, versus the turn it off, versus the um, uh, 12 parts per billion is an incremental increase of 35 parts per billion. Uh, so it's the the hazard level is considered to be at about 100 parts per billion. So even cranking this up as high, high as we go four. Feeling the throat hit, knowing that it was more, it was hotter than what a vapor would typically do on a regular basis, and leaving this in there for a good 30 seconds, we were able to produce some formaldehyde. So now if we stop right here and publish this, we've got formaldehyde detected in electronic cigarettes. Oh my God, it's a carcinogen, and that can be very hazardous to your health. Uh, we're going to take a, a brief pause here. I'm going to cut, clean the tank, and we'll switch over to a cigarette and see what we get. Okay. Uh, for our second demonstration, we're going to try the Marlboro cigarette that my neighbor gave to me. Um, we'll see where that uh, leads to formaldehyde. And again, we found trace amounts of formaldehyde in electronic cigarette. But the question is really, can we do that? Uh, can we do that? We almost knew that we could. The question is, what is it relative to what we would find in a typical combustible tobacco product? Uh, so for our next demonstration, we'll try a cigarette and we'll see where that leads us. Let's restart the uh, formaldehyde gas meter, go through an, its initialization. Okay, and once again we're having low levels of formaldehyde. Um, 
about 12 parts per, per million, fluctuating up and down a little bit. Um, it, I think it just bumped up to about 18 a second ago, but you, if you watch it, it'll just go up and down a little bit, down to 17. Uh, but again, with us creating formaldehyde, there's a little bit ambient, uh, a little bit more ambient formaldehyde in the area. As long as we have our baseline, we'll say, we'll start it at 18, based on what this shows. And once again, we get our saran wrap seal in place. And let's go ahead and light up the cigarette. We'll do this. Give it a minute to be cold, right? I'll throw that away. It's nasty. Um, you know, once again, uh, when we're talking about uh, switching from cigarettes to electronic cigarettes, we're not talking about absolute safety. We're talking about harm reduction. Um, we don't know for sure if with 20 or 30 years of use, there's going to be something that's associated with the use of electronic cigarettes. We do know that the number of chemicals that are in them are dramatically less than in cigarettes. Even with uh, heating the coil um, and creating some byproducts of the heating process, there are additional chemicals other than the four that are put in there, the, the flavorings, the formaldehyde, or flavorings, uh, PG, VG, and nicotine will create some additional chemicals through the heating process. All right, let's see where we are with the um, Marlboro. We're about 2.8 million parts per unit. It's 2,800 um, parts per billion. Uh, again, dramatically different from what we see with the electronic cigarette. And this will come back down uh, fairly quickly once we get it out of the tank. Uh, and we'll move on to our final demonstration, which is the cigar. And uh, for our final demonstration today, I've got an AVO XO cigar kind of a premium cigar and um, lit it up so I can enjoy a little bit of it. Well, we have generated just a little bit of formaldehyde in the area. It's up to 13 parts per million now instead of the 11 to 12 initially. Just a hazard of doing this kind of research in an open environment. So we'll go ahead and put this back down into the tank. Uh, we'll seal this over and we'll try the cigar and we'll see where it goes. All right. And again, this is not scientific. It's not the control setting that you'd have in a, in a lab. Uh, it's just for purposes of generally showing what we can find if we look for ourselves. Um, and clearly, we can find formaldehyde. You can tell by the, the beeping sound that the cigar also has formaldehyde. Uh, the, the meter itself peaks out at um, five parts per million. Um, and which is 5,000 parts per billion, and it's done that with the cigar. Five parts per, billi uh, per million. And it'll gradually, it'll fairly quickly come back down to normal outside of that tank. Uh, the, the, the difference between a cigarette and a cigar in terms of formaldehyde exposure is that people inhale cigarettes, they don't inhale cigars as a general rule. Uh, if you look at the relative risk of cigarettes versus cigars, cigars are, are down some from cigarettes, certainly not hazard free. Uh, but if you look at incrementally from cigarettes up here, cigars here, electronic cigarettes would be way down here in terms of relative risk. And it's really what we're talking about. In, in the United States alone, 480 million people die each year from the effects of uh, cigarettes. Uh, many more are injured, uh, health is impaired, uh, they're disabled related to it, where oxygen, where they go, um, chronic lung disease, heart disease, hypertension, 
you name it, there's a, a bevy of illnesses that goes along with cigarettes. Uh, in the last 15 years of use of electronic cigarettes, so far there has not been one disease uh, known to be associated with them. I think about two and a half years ago there's a case of something called lipoid pneumonia that was found in Spain. There's a guy who's hospitalized, he was an electronic cigarette user, and while he was hospitalized, he developed lipoid pneumonia. It resolved, uh, but because he was an electronic cigarette user, they associated that lipoid pneumonia with cigarette use. Searching the literature prior to that, there's probably 13 or 14 years before that, another case of lipoid pneumonia in a person who was an electronic cigarette user. What I try to get people to understand is if, even if you can prove that the electronic cigarette was associated with those two cases of lipoid pneumonia over a period of 15 years, both people recovered. So two cases of lipoid pneumonia versus 480,000 deaths in America alone every year. I think we're, we're talking about a relative risk reduction that's pretty remarkable. Uh, this is a consumer-driven revolution. It's not driven by uh, healthcare, the CDC, the FDA. Nobody's driving this but consumers alone. Uh, however, there's a lot of misinformation out there on these things. Can you find formaldehyde in electronic cigarettes? We've just proven that you can. Formaldehyde accounts for about 1% of the cases of cancer related to uh, cigarette use. It's a rough estimate. Nobody really knows. There's so many carcinogens in cigarettes. There's over 100 carcinogens in cigarettes. There are 4,000 chemicals. There are far few chemicals in electronic cigarettes, measurable formaldehyde, uh, but at levels so low, they don't even come up to the level of risk uh, for occupational exposure, which is at about... Um, if I remember right, it's about 100 parts per billion. So we showed 35 parts per billion in our test chamber, uh, which is not above the risk for occupational exposure for an eight-hour day. Uh, and certainly, people don't use electronic cigarettes like I did to show this demonstration. It's sporadic through the day, not continuous. So I think just showing what we've shown today, we've shown the relative risk of electronic cigarettes for formaldehyde exposure is exceedingly low and unlikely to be a health hazard. Uh, thank you for your time. I, I hope that you guys want to try to reproduce something like this on your own. It, um, it's not hard to do and it's not expensive to do, but it's very informative. Thank you.